guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Code 3, and it is a 80s cop game, which you're playing cooperatively and choosing a scenario. And the different scenarios can be a cat burglar, you could be having to deal with some dirty cops. There's all kinds of things that can go down in Code 3. It plays two to four players, it takes about an hour to maybe an hour and a half. It's for ages, I would say, probably 12 and up. What you're going to be doing is selecting certain officers and making a deck of cards that has a little bit of deck building in the game where you're going to be have to deal with IA heat cards or maybe you're going to be getting attaboys that will help you throughout the game by accomplishing certain uh, cards in the game. You'll have things like neighborhood patrol or maybe a man in a clown suit. These are basically cards you'll have to deal with in the game based on certain locations. You'll have a certain amount of time to deal with those things all while at the same time dealing with a scenario. For instance, we're going to be showing you the game Cat Burglar or the scenario Cat Burglar for the game, in which case you're going to need to complete these scenarios as you possibly as fast as you possibly can because if you can complete it before a bunch of other things go down, but it's based on this little rate, this crime rate tracker, you're going to win. But if the crime rate tracker goes too far, you're going to lose. There's certain things you can do, like moving your cop car, you'll be able to move certain beat cops that can help you progress the game. You'll be investigating crime scenes, you'll be looking through uh, different witnesses, or you'll be looking through different pieces of evidence, trying to gather things you can for the scenario, all while at the same time trying to keep the crime rate low in the city because if you get too much it's not going to be good for you. Dealing with deck maintenance is very important and you want to make sure that you're always staying a good cop because bad cops are going to have a lot of pain and suffering in this game and it just has a lot of that 80s cop thriller style gameplay. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game Code 3. Let's go ahead and take it down below. It's made by Black Key Games and we're going to show you how to play it and we'll also show you what I think about it right after that. So here's the game Code 3 by Black Key Games and as you can see it comes with quite a bit of stuff here. You're going to be getting uh, four different scenarios or at least that's what I have currently. Uh, this is probably a, this is a prototype so it's going to probably be different as far as the actual game goes but what here looks really nice as you can see. Very very vivid imagery but I chose to pick Cat Burglar. This is the easiest one. Each of these have different difficulties. This is one out of five and maybe something like this one here which is a Joey Schmuckatelli, that one's two out of five. There's a serial killer, which is five out of five, and so on and so forth. It tells you how much time they take, as well as the setup for the scenario. So this one here has a specific setup card, in which case you're going to be going and set it up and move it aside. They also have some nice uh, story aspects to it as well, and you're going to read the story as it progresses and has you hopefully succeed in the gameplay. Uh, let's talk about the cards now. So other than the scenarios themselves and the scenario um, call cards, which you're going to get call police calls, randomly throughout the game. Uh, you're going to have witnesses, and there's a different variety of witnesses, whether it be a little old lady or a low-life informant or maybe just an average Joe, and of course there's the damsel there. Uh, you're going to take these decks and you're going to make sure you give them a good shuffle along with evidence, which is basically the same thing as the witnesses, but instead it's going to have like burglar tools and unable to locate and a smoking gun, so on and so forth. These are what you're going to use to solve crime scene investigations, and luckily they have a reference card which tells you uh, what type of cards are in which decks and how many are there. There's also some other reference cards which involve failure and success when it comes to calls. There is a, an extra amount of these call cards which you'll be utilizing from round to round as well as the specific calls for the specific scenarios of the game. You're going to be getting these uh, coffee and donut tokens which will let you move faster throughout the board. Coffee gives you an extra two speed and when you have coffee and donuts together that lets you move anywhere on the board that you would like. There's additional police officers There's a, uh, or detectives and there's also a, like a attack dogs and whatnot. You're going to also have these motivation and or time tokens. They start off on calls as time tokens and as the rounds go these will be removed as time progresses but if you can succeed these things you're going to be gathering these tokens and they'll turn into motivation which will hopefully uh, give you these overtime tokens because overtime tokens give you extra actions during the game. There's the different chiefs of police and in this scenario it recommends us playing with this guy here so that's the one we're going to be utilizing. There are these extra die here which are basically they're going to be used for completing calls as well as this police call the police die which will give you a specific bonuses based on the uh, chief of police in which case there's the three different sides and what they provide for you whether it be rolling re-rolling any die giving you an extra symbol 
or uh, changing the die to any of, of your choosing. There's this 12-sided die, which is used for calls, and that's based on these numbers here. So when calls come in, you're going to roll these die sometimes and place the calls on the spaces. There are the crime scene tokens, which whenever there's a crime scene, maybe at the landfill, for instance, or at the Blue Mug Coffee Shop, you'll place them there and you'll have to solve certain crimes. And there's also the decks of cards you'll be utilizing. You're going to choose two specific uh, detectives or sergeants and you're going to put them together in a deck along with choosing an IA card, which is IA Heat Internal Affairs, which is no good, as well as an Attaboy card. And Attaboy cards are actually pretty good. If you can secure two of them, you're going to get some good stuff. And if you secure two IA during your turn, you're going to get some bad stuff. Uh, both players are going to have that. You can play up to four players and have up to two cops in each of the uh, decks for the players. I'm going to go ahead and set up for the specific scenario for in this one. We'll have a two player game, so the crime rate tracker will start here. And if it gets to the X, we lose in the specific scenario. And then we have all these over here. So we're going to have these ones here, which are training cards. You're going to shuffle this deck, place it face down, and draw three out for people to choose from. You're going to get these cards here, which are internal affairs interviews, which are not good. You have to be solving these things as they come up if you're not being a very good cop. There's these cards here, which are going to be discipline cards, which are... Uh, let me turn this card to the, they require certain things if you if you uh, to, to take discipline you can deal with internal affairs better attaboys of course and ia heat which will gain you certain things like the internal affairs cards or the commanding officer citation this is how you can get good stuff from attaboys you'll take these cards you can go ahead and utilize them the board is placed randomly here so as you can see you just deal these guys all out you're going to roll and place these uh these cops these are called the beat cops that are not really you but you can help they can help you utilize them the scenarios will tell you which one of the specific CB. It says Cat Burglar. You'll be placing these on specific areas. So you have these two scenarios. And then you have two random police uh, calls, which are going to say where they're going to be going to. It's just 10 with four time. And this one's a random one. So you'll be rolling this die here. And it came up three with four time. And then all of the cops are going to start adjacent to the police station, which is basically something that, that is going to have. It's going to be randomly on the board anyway. But yes, yeah, so you have all these four cops. So you're going to choose your color, basically. But that is pretty much everything you get in the game. And these set up for the game. Uh, let's go ahead now and take it down below. I will show you how to play a round or so of the game, give you an idea of what all the different things do, and then we'll come up and I'll tell you what I think about the game Code 3. So here we have a setup for two players for Code 3 already ready to go. And as you can see, every single player has drawn cards until they received three officer cards. Now, IA Heat, Attaboys, Discipline, Training, those do not count as officer cards. Only characters count as officer cards. So in this case, you got these three guys here and these three guys here. These cards have the same artwork, which might, might be changing, I imagine, but they're going to have different, uh, different actions that you can be able to take. There's three different types of things you can do. You use one shot, which you can play on your turn. It's Something interesting happens teamwork which allows other players to do something very nice and then there's traits which are basically passive abilities that you can take on your turn sometimes they're extremely useful other times they're very situational i've got my cb my cat burglar random calls that have came in and then i've got my random calls of you know people calling in bad things like man buying beer for minors and a man in a clown suit these are things that you can deal with throughout the game because if you don't deal with them this crime tracker is going to go up and if if it goes to the X, our poor, poor uh, Chief Jackson is going to get fired. We don't want that to happen. Every cop is over here and we're ready to go. So we're going to start by choosing a cop. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of green, I suppose, and orange. Because we're only going to play with yellow and blue. And this will be yellow over here and this will be blue over here. So let's begin. Now you can take three actions on your turn. You can do code two, code three, a dispo slash radio card, and, invest and an investigation, as well as you can take a break. Code two is you can move two spaces. And whenever you move, every time you hit an intersection, that's a space. And whenever you hit a, la a lane, that's a space as well. So in this case, that'd be one and two spaces. That would be one action. You could also do a code three instead, which will allow you to move anywhere as long as you spend a coffee and a donut. So for instance, if this player had these two tokens, he could do a code three and he could move all the way over here if he wanted to and spend these two resources. Another thing he could do is the dispel radio cards, which allow you to complete these specific cards here. These are going to give you motivation, depending on how many time cubes are left on them, as well as bonuses on the left hand, bottom left hand side, or negatives if you fail them on the bottom right hand side. The top left is going to be how much time is on them and motivation, and then the top right is going to be where these cards are placed depending on the number and or if it has a question mark, you're going to be rolling this die here, which is a 12-sided die for each of the 12 different squares on 
the board. The break is pretty simple as well. You just go ahead and uh, take a coffee, a donut, or you can take two motivation if you want, and that's just a simple action. The last thing you can do is investigate a crime scene. So for instance, if we had a crime scene at the landfill, you can go ahead and investigate that, and usually that's going to be a scenario. It'll be like, oh, you you need to find a damsel, and you also need to find some weapons. And you're going to be looking through these decks based on your stat cards here. For instance, this is your... Uh, this is your uh, resting stat, basically. It's the stat you're going to be using to roll die. And this over here is going to be your investigation stat, which is going to allow you to take more cards from here. Beat cops, whenever they're adjacent to a location that you're investigating or helping with a radio call, is going to give you a bonus to either of these stats. So I'll use them very wisely. So let's go ahead and show you one, one turn for this player. So he'll go one, two, that's one action. And one, two, that's his second action. And he's got one more. And he's going to try and attempt this man buying beer for miners. And it tells you what you need in order to complete this. You're going to need two magnets magnifying glasses and two of these radios let's go ahead and look at what he has he has a one shot well let's him re-roll uh, uh re-roll any number of patrol dice with a radio symbol on it so that's not super great but it says trait add a radio to each radio call attempt this turn so that's actually very useful this one says teamwork other players can use a one shot to re-roll any number of their patrol dice and then this one says a one shot move another player up to two spaces so he can go ahead and turn this to the side and that will allow him to move one player two spaces and maybe he wants to go this way so one and two having this player move a little bit is going to get him closer to these guys here to complete them all right so let's go and attempt our, our to complete our, uh, our radio call so we need two three four five dice so we're gonna get five dice three four and five and remember we get to add one of these to the call and we're also going to be taking this die here which is because of the specific chief of police that we have if we had a beat cop over here we'd get up to six die and six is the most you can have so we're gonna go ahead and then roll these die beautiful now we needed two magnifying glasses and two radios so we luckily have one radio plus this one card as a radio then we have this magnifying glass but these are no good uh so we're gonna look at the police officer and it says okay what does he say the, the chief the chief of police it says change one patrol die to any side that's very useful we'll take this and we'll move it to this side here and then we've got two magnifying glasses a radio here and a radio here which allows us to complete this specific call with four motivation this card is then going to go go away it's going to be discarded these are going to go to the specific officer and then he's basically done with his turn uh, when a player is done with their turn, they're going to follow certain steps. And the first thing is uh, they're going to remove a cube uh, from all these spaces here. They're going to draw two radio cards from this deck here of radio cards. So, for instance, so these guys are all going to lose a cube here. And then we're going to take two more radio cards and pop them down the board. This one says it needs to be on 10. It's got three time tokens on it. And this one here says question marks. So we're going to go ahead and roll this die here. And that's a four, which means we will put it, where are you four? Right here with three time cubes on it as well. And, uh, oh, also I forgot to mention, this, this one here specifically gave us a special bonus. And the special bonuses will tell you on uh, here, it says you can move a beat cop to any space. So maybe you want to move this beat cop over here for this player's next turn. If he were to have failed this card, he would have gotten an IA card, which is one of these guys here, and he would have to put it in his deck. So, but anyway, so after that, then he's going to go ahead and shuffle cards and redraw. So all of these cards here are going to go ahead and get shuffled into this deck here. And then you're going to go ahead and redraw them out. So let's see if we can get all three cops. Oh, we did. So no IA heat and no attaboys. After that, we're going to go ahead and uh, check to see if there's any IA heat or attaboys. And if there's two of either one, we're going to suffer some kind of penalty or gain some benefit to attaboys. If we had two of these guys out, that would allow us to gain a commanding officer citation, which we'd put in front of us and be able to utilize one time as a one shot. And if we had two IA heats, we'd discard those and we'd have to take a random internal affairs interview, which can be bad. We have to complete these and we'll have certain requirements in order to uh, de defeat these guys. But we can also choose actions like we can choose to beg, which will allow us to re roll die and have us take these specific disciplines or other officers can help us out by taking IA heat, allowing us to re-roll die as well. So we want to be careful with uh, internal affairs. We don't want to have to deal with that too much. Then after that, we're going to go ahead and gamble for motivation if we want. Now remember, we only can have seven total tokens in front of us, whether it be coffee or donuts or overtime or even motivation. So what you can do with this is you can gamble them. For instance, I can gamble all four and I'm going to roll a die because I want to get overtime. And if I have a four or lower, um, so this is a six. Oh, sorry, if I get a higher than the, the amount I re removed, then I'm going to get an overtime, which is perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So we take that 
However, if I only picked two, oh, sorry, here, no, it actually would fail this. It's lower, it's four or lower in this case. So because of that, I would have actually failed this. I could have also chosen to two, two, and, two and two, which means I would need to roll a two or lower and then a two or lower. So that would be a fail and that would be a success and that would grant me a token. And these tokens here are used for additional actions on your turn. Instead of three, you could discard one of these guys and gain four. But I gambled it away and I failed, so they go there. Then after that, there's the end of the watch, which we check to see if we have less than seven resources in our area, any story events that may ha be happening trigger, and then the next player is going to get to go and continue just the same. These story elements will have something you need to read. There'll be a goal as to what you need to do, whether it be completing these two specific one the calls for this one or going into here. And uh, it's, the game's going to continue until you complete this entire storyline. There's certain one shots on specific locations that will let you do certain things like spend three motivation to take a donut and a coffee or over here spend three motivation to take two two coffees very very useful as well as let's say that just for instance that we have these crime scenes here and we want to gain a let's say we want to get a uh, one of those uh, those informants right so we look and see so if, if just just for an example he would have two three four five six so he'd take the top six cards of this deck here he'd flip them over and look to see if he got an informant he didn't so these would all go away but there are uh, low life informants in here so hopefully we can pull that off and if you can get certain ones for certain scenarios that's going to actually help you out and you're going to continue the game going like that as these guys get removed the time counters every turn if nobody solves them they're going to be removed from the game and this little track's going to go up in which case you can lose there's also a couple of other ways you can lose in the game there's certain training cards that you can gain uh, that will help you in certain ways like gaining an overtime and whatnot and of course just trying to avoid the deck control of like the ia heat and the uh the uh, attaboys which you want to have as many attaboys as possible and utilizing your opponent's teamwork cards as well and that's pretty much the idea of the game moving around the board solving crime investigating and completing your scenario before crime overruns the entire city in the game code three that should be enough for you to get an idea of the game let's come up and talk about it so let's do some caveats for the game code three before we get into my review and the first thing is let's talk about some more of the cards in the decks because i only showed you a few for that example sergeant owens says he has a teamwork card and each player gains a one shot that lets you move to uh move uh, a beat cop two spaces and beat cops are very useful because certain certain people like like owens will be able to utilize beat cops as though they were themselves uh, this one here is a one shot move another player up to four spaces and move a beat cop up to four spaces as well they got barclay over here which has a teamwork which of course lets other people utilize your abilities on their turn uh, when another player investigates the evidence or witness deck they're drawing cards based on their um, investigate scores uh, they're, and they're not able to play a card or draw a card because they didn't find one, they can actually remove three of those cards for that specific scenario, which making the deck smaller and easier to find what they're looking for. Uh, how about a one-shot lets you draw nine evidence or witness cards and place any of number of them in lockup, which is basically out of the game for that scenario. Or take any take actions at any space as if you were a beat cop, and uh, as a one-shot, you can move a beat cop up to four spaces. Very, very useful. All the different officers play differently, so you can choose the officers you want. There's also, also recommended officers that you can kind of put together, but they do function uniquely to themselves. Uh, and when you put them together, they can kind of have some interesting cross play. There are also are the different sergeants or chiefs of polices in which you're going to be uh, selecting. Uh, and based on this white die is what's going to happen, whether it be taking three motivation with the badge symbol or removing an AI heat from one from your officer deck or to move a patrol car to any space. That's all the same symbol with different uh, different chiefs. So they actually have some unique assistance that they can provide depending on the scenario and how you choose to utilize them. The coffee and the donuts being put together makes you move to any space, whereas donuts by themselves just make you kind of heavier and the coffee is good for moving two extra spaces whenever you're doing a code two you've got the crime scenes which you're going to be pulling from the decks and whatnot based on your score trying to gather what you need uh what else do i really want to talk about i suppose we can talk about the die as well so there's certain radio calls that will come in and say oh you need three specific uh, gun cards or you're going to need a radio and a take a discipline card so there's some certain ones will have options as well as not only just options as far as symbols go but also there'll be one like this it says you need a magnifying glass you 
you need a radio, you need a gun, and then you also need all of your die to add up to a total of 12. So you'll be utilizing your die for numerical value as well as for symbol value and sometimes either or, as well as you'll have the option sometimes to just take a bunch of bad stuff and complete that specific call, but it's at a high cost that will affect you later. So they have some really interesting and unique aspects to that. The different scenarios, which I didn't go through a lot, but they have a lot of story involved with them and the <laughs> Chief Jackson is talking to you throughout this entire thing and you're trying to eventually catch this cat burglar who's going around town, all while at the same time having to deal with all the stuff that is affecting the city in some way, shape, or form. But that is the basic idea. So what do I think about it? Well, first of all, the game is vibrant and really cool looking. It reminds me of an 80s style cop cop beat cop type show which uh, it's got like a, like a tv show kind of thing going on it does remind me of, of actually what cops have to deal with there's like certain big crimes that are always having to be like they, they have to deal with throughout a constant amount of time whereas if they're dealing with something like um uh, just uh, something happens like for instance I'll just draw one of these guys a creepy stalker is at a gas station or maybe an angry war vet is going around causing trouble or an angry taxpayer and so you have to go and deal with these situations because if you don't the city will go go too corrupt the crime will be too bad and you'll have to get fired but then there's the big cases like the cat burglar or the murderer which you also need to solve but you have a longer period of time to solve them but they require more steps and they're more vigorous the cooperative aspect of this game is really fun I really enjoy this game this reminds me of uh, Brook City but it's different it's not as mechanical as that game and it's pretty intuitive as you move throughout it like Brook City had a lot to offer it had a lot of different aspects that so you can go it was much more sandboxy this one here is limited to the different tiles and where you can choose to go and you're working to make the best possible moves on your turn there's a limited amount of luck but what is there is based on the die roll when you need to complete calls but luckily you have options and there's a lot of mitigation involved in your deck as well as the, the different motivations motivations you can use to gather overtime for certain actions. There's teamwork cards you can choose to pair up along with the officers or the chief of police, which can kind of give you all this that you need to do. Now, if you chose poorly or drew poorly, as well as rolled poorly, poorly yeah, you can just get unfairly messed over right but when we played the we played two scenarios of the four one was the easier one and one was a more difficult one we were able to complete the easy one fairly easily and the more difficult one we almost we almost got to it it felt like a really nice close race to the finish uh overall enjoyed this game quite profusely i'd like to see uh, at least at least one or two more scenarios even though they do have a lot of replayability on their own just because i like the scenario aspect of the game how you can choose to deal with the certain bad guys and whatnot not. that felt really fresh and really really unique and just being able to add that felt like a new game each time I played it as well as uh, the different amount of players so I look like I played the I played the easy one three times two three and I believe even four players and I enjoyed it with more players even though it doesn't matter how many people you play with it's like kind of like Forbidden Island right where you can play with a bunch of players it just at the end of the turn stuff happens and it just goes to the next player's turn so the board still fills up but you get more teamwork abilities with that players can help you in certain ways better than other players and it just feels like the city is more alive obviously with more players I always like more players in game but two players works really well as well I don't actually have a problem with any of that um, I, I, if I were to say anything negative about the game I suppose it would be yes there is some luck factor as far as how the die works uh, sometimes you're not gonna be able to get to a certain area because you're just too far away and you don't have what is needed so you're gonna lose that specific call that you might have wanted to do or you're just like one off on one specific thing IA cards might pop up and you have to deal with certain things you're like oh, I really don't want to deal with this specific thing but I have to now but I feel like that has a lot of theme that is involved with this game as far as how cost go but anyway overall i really enjoyed this game i think if you like games that have action management a little bit of deck building a little bit of choices as to how you want to play the game and the different scenarios of code 3 this is something i would definitely definitely suggest checking out i, I thoroughly enjoyed this game i i did enjoy this more than brook city so if you like brook city we like games like that this is definitely what i would suggest checking out as well code 3 by black key games a solid choice in 80s cop shenanigans. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this game, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as taking a look at Code 3 down below in the description. It'll be on Kickstarter. It's got a really cool 80s theme that I think most people are going to enjoy, especially people of that specific genre and era. era genre. Are you part of a genre? I don't know. As well as taking a look at our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more, and our friends, everythingboardgames.com, and the Giveaway Geek, as well as taking a look at my friend's 
channel. Um, I will post it up right now, my friend Monique. She's just started up, she's brand new. Give her some likes, give her some sh you know, some subscribes and all that good stuff. I think she'll really appreciate it. And she's got really great tutorials for board games. I'm looking forward to see what else she has to do. And don't forget to go ahead and check out our live streams. Every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST, we give away a ton of games we'll be having next week with Ross Thompson from USAopoly showing the game. I don't know what it is it's called. It's got a lot of Harry Potter stuff. You'll, you'll, you'll have fun. You'll see what we, we're doing there. All right, guys. It's been a long day. It's hot in here. I'm tired. I'm going to leave. Thanks for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. That was perfect. <laughs>